Hi everyone, welcome back to Anita's Joints. Hashtag is in the joint. Every day is payday, baby. You tuned in to another video here. So I wanted to talk about, um, I guess, the movements going forward uh, with the Manchester City Women's Club and uh, get to know who is the new women's director of football, City's new women's director of football. I think Nillis Nielsen and um, <clears throat> already making uh, my head spin because I came across the article about Gareth Taylor as well but I wanted to let y'all know what City have put up about this gentleman here and we're gonna go through it a little bit and read about what he has done in the football realm and is he the right man for City's new and first women's director of football and when you think about it houston dash um they have their first director of football um and it was a woman and um we have a man so that's just uh, already off to a great start right city already already <laughs> Niels Nielsen has been appointed director of football uh, for our women's team, subject to work permit. All right? He has arrived at City with a um, wealth of experience in both men's and women's football across youth and senior levels, which has seen him take up roles in the homeland in his homeland of China and Switzerland. So below are some key aspects of his life that have helped shape the person he is today. His outlook on the beautiful game and how his path led to Manchester. Okay. Um, you know, he's 51. He's one year, uh, I think, older than Taylor. I didn't even know Taylor was actually that. He was up there. Anyways, <laughs> age is just a number. A uh, 51-year-old enjoyed a Leslie slight co conventional route into the professional football. Born in Greenland with serious back conditions, doctors advised him against playing sport in his youth. However, Neeson defied the odds and played at a high youth level until, unfortunately, injury to his vertebrae forced him to stop playing and instead turned his attentions to coaching. The rest, as they say, is history. Nielsen said, I love the game, of course. If I could play, if I could have played, I would have. But when I was not a youth player anymore, it was too difficult. Very early on when I stopped playing, I was 19 or 20. I decided to go the coaching way. So even before I took all the coaching diplomas, I could I could when I was very young. Oh, even before I took all the coaching diplomas, I could when I was young. Coaching career. This is his coaching career. As Nielsen mentions, he left the football pitch for a dugout at the early age. During his university years, he coached youth teams in Copenhagen before overseeing U15 and U16 age groups for the Danish Football Federation. He has received special, uh, I guess, uh, dispensation from the Danish FA to undertake the UEFA A license, one of the highest coaching courses in the football world, when he was just 20 years old. I spoke the language of the players because in the beginning I was 20. I was coaching 17 year olds in the best league in Denmark. It was a lot of fun. Nielsen explains. I could relate to them because I was not that much older than them. And when I was growing up, I was sort of the person who could speak my mind. I was always captain anyway, so they always listened to me. I didn't really see it as pressure. I saw it as something I enjoyed doing. I've been working in football for so long. I've never really had something I consider a work day. When you're so miserable when you come home. You say, what, what, what? He said, I've been, been working in football for so long. I've never really had something I considered a work day. When you're so miserable when you come home. When you come, what? I don't know what the fuck that, that's supposed to mean. Anyways, education. A degree in sports psychology has played an important role in enriching Nielsen's understanding of data and sports and its influencing and improving both individual players and teams. However, our new director of football qualified that statistics form just one part of his overall footballing philosophy. He explained, studying sports, psych studying sports psychology benefited me because it became a big thing when we're doing a lot of research and using data to back up the things we are doing and the decisions we made. I knew data alone couldn't do it for you. You, ha you still have to trust the feelings you have inside. Trust yourself in making the correct decisions. 
But if you can back it up with something concrete, it's much easier also to develop the players because it is their black and white. It doesn't lie. Numbers don't lie, but they can be interpreted in many ways. So the whole scientific beginning I had was very helpful, I would say, but think also because I knew it was, I knew it was not going, I was not going to do it alone. Euro 2017. So between all that time of him, I guess, studying coaching psychology, he, he and coaching U20, his f first big gig, one of uh, Nielsen's greatest achievements, saw him guide Denmark to the final of Euro 2017, qualifying for the knockout stages with a second place finish in Group A, unlikely victories over then holders Germany, last eight, and Austria semifinals followed. A showdown with the host nation, Netherlands, beckoned, but despite a strong showing at, oh goodness, somewhere in Netherlands, <laughs> Nielsen's side fell to, fell to a 4 to defeat. However, the Dames and, and Nielsen had turned plenty of heads in their route in their route to their first and only appearance in a major final. But where's Denmark now, fam? Why aren't you still with Denmark now? Anyways, accolades following the conclusion of the 2017 uh, Euros, uh, Euros 20, 2017, and Nielsen was the runner-up of the 2017 The Best FIFA Women's Coach Award behind Serena. Soon after, he became the assistant coach of the Chinese under 20 before taking up the switzerland women head coach job he led he led the swiss national team to euro 2020 but a tough group consists consisting of the netherlands sweden and portugal missed out on the knockout stages finishing third in group c so this is our new um women's city's new women's football City's um, <laughs> City's new women's director of football. Um, you know, he hasn't really had a lot of jobs, and the fact that he went from a national team to a U twenty side, and then he went back to a national team. Um, is is kind of concerning, raising some red flags. Um, is Nether was Netherlands twenty twenty? Uh, I mean, was Euro twenty twenty? The Netherlands, Sweden, Portugal, a tough group. He finished third, and then he, like I said, that's nice that he brought up if 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 it, this was his first. Um, what do you say? His first. He brought he helped the Danish become the first and their only. Um, uh, you know, getting to the final. Why, why didn't he stay? Uh, I wonder what happened. And then, like I said, even with Switzerland, why didn't he stay? Uh, so he seems to be... I don't know, I'm just... I'm just... I'm not convinced, in a way. Not convinced. Is he good enough to be the new director of football for City? We'll just have to see. But then... I saw this article. Okay, I saw this article. Oh, Lord have mercy. Let's let me, let me pull it up for y'all. Manchester City women's manager Gareth Taylor poised to sign a new deal. This is on the Telegraph. Exclusive. Despite City looking to set looking <laughs> set to miss out on Europe's next season. Taylor's contract is poised to be extended. And this is just another article how he wants to write about it. Uh, but Manchester City women uh, manager Gary Taylor is poised to sign a new one deal contract extension after what sources described a very positive, a very positive discussions over his future. Taylor Taylor existing deal is set to ex expire at the end of the season, meaning that Saturday's home match against Everton, City's last game of the Women's Super League campaign, which was today, could be could have been the 50-year-old's final fixture in charge. However, Telegraph Sports understand that both Taylor and City want him to remain in charge for next season. 
Conversations between Taylor and the club are believed to have been taking place well in advance of Sunday's Manchester Derby, which ended in a late defeat to one against Manchester United. Oh goodness, that looks to set uh, that looks to set to co-sign City to fourth place and leave them out of the European qualification process. Despite Taylor and the club's natural disappointment at missing out on next season Champions League. Club and manager have a good relationship and firmly believe they can be successful 2023-2024 campaign. Asked where his future lie after Saturday's game, after Sunday's game, and if he would stay at the club, Taylor replied, "Of course, yes, I love the club. I work hard. I love working with the players. So I don't see anything changing on that front." Oh, low have mercy. Earlier in May, former Denmark and Switzerland manager Niels Nielsen was appointed at City's at City's first women director of football, and he ha and he has said he is looking forward to working with Taylor, Taylor who played for City's men's side from 1998 to 2001 has been in charge of the women's Super League I mean of of the WSL team since 2020 when the, he took over for former manager Nick Cushing's and signed a three-year deal in May of that year. The former Wales international forward, whose club career also included spells at Sheffield United, Nottingham Forest, and Bristol Rovers, has coached, has coached within City's Boys Academy prior to taking on the women's team manager job. To be honest, this has to be his last season, to be honest. This has to be his last season. And that's great that Nielsen and, and Gareth have had positive discussions, but you need to be able to have a manager that can help your team be successful. Um, and it has gone downhill ever since... We lost all our lionesses practically, not last year. Did we lose them all last year or this year? Either it was last year or the year before. But too early, you know, when, when he took over, we had the Australians, right? The Australians, Lord have mercy. When he took over, we had brought in the... City had brought in uh, the USA players, Sam Lewis and... and um, and Rose Lavelle, and of course, Bronx was back, and and then you know we still had Georgia, Carolina Walsh, everyone, everyone. We had all the lionesses, yeah. They went ultimately to the. They had to play, of course, Barcelona. Lost to Barcelona, and then again, uh, they won uh, a um, either it was a Vitality Cup or a Continental Cup in 2020, and then in 2022. Those were 2022, of course, the the Continental Cup was uh, City's last trophy, right, under Taylor. So he's only won two trophies in his three years, bounced out of the Champions League twice in the last two years, first round. Not even getting, in, not even getting to the, into the group stage. Not even getting into the group stages uh, both years. And now here, after his, la his final contract year, has put City in a position where they're fourth, and they did not qualify. They're fourth trophy list, and they didn't qualify for a Champions League spot. But yet, they still think that through positive discussions, he's still the man for the job. And in, a, in my opinion, in the game where you need to win and be successful, especially at a club in Manchester City, it's not to par. It's not to standard. And um, I just hope we. I, I saw an article. Rasso will be leaving, and you know he signed Rasso, and she's leaving. He signed Losada and she left. The players that he signed are leaving right after because City have not been successful. And whose fault is that? Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with City in their 2023, 2024, 2023, 2024 campaign. But anyways, uh, that's the new uh, director of football with uh, Manchester City. I wanted to give you an update on that. Uh, and let me know what y'all think. Uh, what options do City have to sign when it comes to players? And what manager would, would, would anyone else, who, who could be the next City manager? And in general, what do City need to improve next season uh, to actually make Champions League and, you know, maybe get closer 
uh, to the title race next season. But anyways, it's your girl Nita flying high, flying out of this third dimensional reality, and I'm going to see you on the next one, okay? Deuces. <laughs>